Um, when I arrived at the A&E in the Ultra Hospital, I told the staff, the reception staff, that I cut my right thumb. Um, again, I showed them my passport, which I have here, and it tells you all the information on the back. Um, they didn't really take it into consideration. And um, then they told me just to take a seat in the waiting room to see the Trident nurse. And whenever I went and got called, um, I told the situation that I cut my thumb open and um, told them about the passport. Then they went away and got gloves. I asked me, you know, I'm allergic to lead text. Make sure they're lead text free. Start to laugh at me. You know, and then uh, she licked my thumb and just told me to wait outside again to see the, the doctor. So then I had to wait outside and a wee while later um, my ears start to swell up. I've actually got pictures here showed you the way my face will go from knee tax allergies. And can I, ask, um, can I ask you, Daryl, just to yep. your your passport yep. that you have. Yep. Would it tell the people in A and E that you are allergic to latex? Yep. Yeah, so it, it does. Everything's all there, yeah. But I'm yeah. allergic to. Yeah. I see the hand gel in hospitals that has to be removed as well. It's actually all in the back of what I'm allergic to. Yeah. Also medication as well I'm allergic to because of rare illness. I've got um, before you get, which again the hospital staff doesn't know nothing about. Yeah. And that's why it's very important to me to, to have this um, passport. And, and can I ask you when they t when you gave them showed them the passport, did they take it off you? and kind of have it with them while you were in the emergency department or did they just kind of say well thanks so I can hand it back to you? Or? Well whenever I went to reception I showed them the passport so they took all my notes down so they didn't have to explain too much but they didn't say about the allergies you know I had to tell them it's not a bit to that bit and they never said nothing they just handed it back to me. Okay. So it's sort of you know Okay, sorry, I, I interrupted you okay. no, there. So, that's okay, no so, worries. So, yes, you, you were at where your, your ear had swollen yeah, up. Yeah, so, it? yeah, and then um, I was called around the train house, and there was a male nurse there at this stage, and I said again, I said to him, look, at least he takes free gloves, and he started to laugh again at me. So, a wee while later, um, that was okay. So, when we went home, my whole face started to swell up, and my eyes started to close. So, when we went to, I went back, but I didn't want to go back to... Um, to, to the Ulster. I went then back to the Royal because I didn't have much faith going back there and saying, like, this is what happened to me. And then when I went to the Royal, um, I showed them my passport. The guy there was very, very good. He, was, he took time with me, explained everything to me. And then I went around to, to see the doctor then, straight away, because it was an allergy. So it's very important to get that diagnosed, you know, to even get the right treatment. And the guy there said I never saw anything like it, you know, but the rare condition that I had and how'd I, how'd I, how I we cope with this. So I told him what to do. I asked me to go on the computer, type in before you, and it'll come up our website and tell you what to do. So that's okay. Then he waited. Um, he came back with his iPad or iPhone and showed me what he actually did on the computer. And he said, very, very good information that I give him. Only from that there, and then he kept me in overnight, and they had to work for me overnight. Um, CPR to work on me, because my heart, my breathing all went, everything went down. But I didn't know the stage till all the doctors came out. You know, when I woke up and all these doctors, and that told me that's what happened to me in, in Donald. That was a latex allergy, mm -hmm. and that's what happened then. Okay. And when you were at the Ulster and when you were at the Royal, were they both very busy or was there any difference between how busy the two hospitals were when you visited? No, not really busy, no. It's all right. So the Ulster, the Ulster wasn't very busy? No. Okay. No. And when you visited the Royal, was it? Yes. The Royal was sort of busy, wasn't it? Or was it? No, not too bad. Not too bad, no. No. Okay. Very good, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got seen quite quickly in the Royal, yeah. Because of the rare condition and nobody's known that. Nothing about it, you know. This is more, more problem I'm facing, you know. Um, free, I go quite regularly to A and E because of my condition, you know. I've been just back there a while ago, but a week ago there, and it says, "Look, we can't treat you." <laughs> so if they can't treat me, where am I meant to go? Mm -hmm. 
You know, that's from Dundon now, so warm. I meant to go, nobody's treated me. And sorry, just you, you, were, you were in the Ulster last yes, week? Yes, yes, last week, yeah. And what was the problem that you... you I took, I took a reaction to something, but I don't know what the reaction is, and because it's okay. related to the furia. And they said, look, we can't treat, treat you because we don't know nothing about it. So did they send they just sent me home GP, again? Go back to your GP? Or did no, they didn't say anything? nothing to me, no. No, okay. just sent me home. That's every time I go to these hospitals and I need treatment, they just sent me home again. They just left there. Okay, and, and final question I think for me is just, if you're able to talk to the people who are in charge of health services in, in, in hospitals, um, what are the things that you think they should take into account or what are the things you what messages would you like them to hear? Well, well I like to think because there's so many rare conditions out there, I think things has to be improved, you know, because not only for the for the medical staff, but also for myself, you know, trying to cope with it and trying to explain, you know, this is what happens. Now I've been to England and I go I have a rare, a rare disease group over in England. But because I live here in Northern Ireland, they said they couldn't treat me, because I live here. What's the difference between here and, and there? You know, we're still part of the United Kingdom, you know, and they wouldn't help us. And there's about 40 people in the room who have perfuria. I'm the only one that took reaction to the air condition. I mean, you know, it just didn't even bother, it didn't even say, right, come over and so well, you're left again on your own. So if I can't help you, we're, we're meant to go to get help. Sure. You know? Marion, do you want to ask anything? Um, do you have any links with the rare diseases in I do at the moment. I just started this year. We've been storming with it. Um, there's a guy there and he was very interested and he came to my house to explain to him what happened. But again, you're just left there. We're meant to go see the boards, we're meant to have talks, we're meant to have this, nurses, everybody's meant to be involved. So far, nothing's been done. Again, I'm left on my own. Conditions that causes you a lot of stress. It is because stress can actually trigger the, mm -hmm. the condition out as well, which I've had it recently. Mm -hmm. um, the same as when I go to the hospitals again, that's stress for me. And I need in a dark room, now these lights are really horrendous for me. But again, that needs to be stressed as well. I need to go in a dark room, so there's no lights of, at all, and make sure everything's safe and things are mm -hmm. dark. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. Daryl, you've been very helpful and very full in, in what you've said, and I've got nothing to add. Um, I've got no questions to add. I just wanted to personally thank you very much for uh, sharing what you have and letting us benefit from it. Yeah. Okay. And I have one final question, really, Daryl. Is I know that you then went um, to the Patient Client Council to. That's right. Yeah. Um, to make a complaint. Yes. And I wonder if you'd just take us through how that worked out and whether you thought that was a good experience for you, and if so, whether you got what you wanted from, from those procedures. Okay. Just take us through how, what complaint you made and what happened there. Okay, um, I went to a patient and client. There was a big thing in Town Hall in Newton Arts about a year ago, I think it was. And um, I told him the situation, you know, you put your things, your, your comments in the box and then the girl comes out and maybe reads out. And I said, look, this is very important for me to let people know there is a condition and what help can I get? So then patient client then came and told and got me statements and things I like got there. And then whenever I had the A&E, then I made a complaint through patient client, or that I'd be lost. I wouldn't even know where to start. You know, how do I make a complaint, how do I do this? And they've been really good, really supportive to me. They've done all the letters and then they write to you, make sure it's right, and then you send all the letters, they did all on your behalf. So far from that, yeah, I think it's very good to have that. And, and you'd said in, in, in what you'd put in, in writing about how you'd really like to meet with A&E nurses to explain yes. your condition and, and know a bit more about patients who... Did, did you suggest that? or did We did, be... yes. I did, and there's been no follow-up or nothing. Again, I'm left on my own. You know, I wanted GPs, doctors, consultants, anybody, because the more people 
that there is involved would be better for the people coming behind me. You know, like my, my daughter, for instance, and her family will have something similar. You know, and I want to make arrangements for her. You know, silly for me, but I, if I can get a cure for other people, that's what I'm working towards. Yeah. And, and really, it's a final question for me then. If someone else came to you and said, well, is it worth going through the complaints procedure with the health service and getting the help of the patient client council, would you, would you say, yes, it is worth doing? Yes, definitely, yes, definitely is worth it. Because it's helped me in the past, you know, it helped me. And now when I have something like an incident that comes up, I say, well, I'll go to the patient client and they'll do work on me. Okay. As well as I have a GP at the moment, I have problems with that as well. It's just horrendous yes. service that I'm having. The deal with everything. And, and why would you recommend it? What, what's been the difference with how you've been treated? In, in, you know, if, if, if you went back and had to go to A&E tomorrow, what do you think would be the difference between now that you've used the complaints procedure? How do you think they would treat you differently? Or what would, be the, what would make the difference between how you were treated before and how you might get treated now? Because um, they would actually listen to you more because you went through the complaint and you know the procedures. And then they know that OESIS or, or whatever has knows how to do that complaint or will do this yes, and not the other. Okay. And anything finally that you would like to say finally to us? Well, I just like to make sure that the staff knows on how to treat people with their illness and treat them, you know, and especially the passport. I mean, that's what the passports are all about. And, and to read and, and give me time and stuff, because sometimes I can't explain. If I'm in attack or seizures, I wouldn't even have a clue or anything, you know, because I'll pass out then again, which ha has happened, you know. Okay, thank you. That's really, really important for us that we hear, hear about those experiences. So thanks again for coming in today.